So you're a new MacBook M1 owner, or you might be looking to buy this laptop very soon. And if you're like me, I had no idea how to use Mac OS, as this is actually gonna be my first time on the operating system. I've had the pleasure for owning this laptop for the last four months, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the most valuable tips and tricks that I've found that have actually changed and improved my experience with these MacBooks. I wanna start off this video with shortcuts. There are so many shortcuts you can use in Mac OS, but I wanted to highlight the key ones that have actually changed my experience and made my workflow more efficient. The first one being Command plus H. This allows you to hide any active windows that are currently open very quickly. This can prove to be especially useful when you don't wanna share what's on your screen with somebody beside you. Another shortcut you can do with an active program or window open is with Command W. This allows you to close any active tabs or windows within a program without actually quitting the entire program. So this is actually really useful instead of dragging your mouse to the X to close tabs in Safari, you can very quickly just press the command and close the tabs accordingly. To piggyback off the last shortcut, if you press Command Shift T, it reopens the tab that you previously closed. So this is quite useful when you accidentally close tabs. I do this all the time and just this simple command will bring it right back up to where you just were. This next tip is for a lot of Windows owners. So on Windows, we're very used to pressing X and the actual program closes. But on Mac OS, when you press X on an active program, more often than not, it doesn't actually quit the program. It just kind of minimizes it for you on the side and it runs in the background. There obviously are perks to this, but one of the downsides is that battery will be draining a lot faster because the program is still open. So to rectify this, whenever you want to actually fully close a program, you want to press Command Q. That's going to fully quit yourself out of the program and help you save some battery life. This next shortcut is gonna be your best friend moving forward within Mac OS. This is hands down the most common one I use, which is Command plus Spacebar. That gives you access to Spotlight Search. Spotlight Search gives you the ability to search for files, programs, applications. It even lets you do calculations within the Spotlight Search bar. It also lets you look up things on Safari. There's a lot of power and function within this tool. And the more you use it, the more you, you kind of realize how useful it is in your workflow and being productive on Mac OS. The last shortcut I wanna share with you today is screenshots. By pressing Command Shift 3, you can very quickly take a screenshot of your entire screen, or by pressing Command Shift 4, you can actually highlight a specific area of your screen that you wanna screenshot. I do wanna highlight one thing very quickly, and that is if you are enjoying this video, please smash that like button down below. It helps this video so much, and subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. I upload a ton of MacBook M1 videos that I know you'll enjoy, so you definitely don't wanna miss any of that. So let's get back into those tips now. Now I wanna talk about Finder and making that more useful for you. Finder pretty much is the brain of the Mac operating system. It's what allows you to find all of the files within your computer. And I think the way that Apple has it set up isn't the most optimal way out of the box. I think if you make these changes that I've made, you'll have a much better experience with this application. The very first thing that I did is change my view within Finder to columns by pressing Command 3. By doing this, every time you press into a file, it shows the file path of where you're going. I find this to be extremely useful in making sure I'm organized within my computer and when I'm navigating it. It's also great for singular items and files and documents that are not within folders. By pressing on that single item, it actually gives you a preview on the right hand side and gives you a set of information. I personally find this view just a lot more useful than the default one. You'll also want to turn on view path bar and view status bar by going under the view tab in Finder. This allows you to see more information on the bottom of Finder pertaining to how much storage is remaining on your MacBook as well as where you are within your MacBook by showing you the actual file path as well. I, again, very useful stuff to have enabled. Now I wanna talk about system preferences. What I'm about to share with you are key things that if you change them, I really think you're gonna have a much better Mac OS experience in terms of battery life, the way you use the laptop, the whole nine yards. So let's start off with scroll bars. By default, the scroll bar on the side of your windows are turned off unless you're scrolling. I think this is a mistake. So you can change that by going into system preferences in general, 
and then enabling scroll bars to be shown always. It provides you as the user of the laptop the ability to see just how much or how big a web page actually is. I think that's valuable information. Also located within the general tab is turning on dark mode. Not only does it look really cool, but it actually does save battery life on your computer. So you kind of get a win-win turning on this feature. This next tip is for Apple Watch owners. If you go into security and privacy and then go to the general tab, you can enable your Apple Watch to unlock your MacBook and other applications. This is just very useful instead of having to use Touch ID or type your password when necessary. Still continuing the theme of system preference changes, I do wanna focus on the trackpad. I do love the trackpad that Apple provides. It's the best in any laptop in my opinion, but it doesn't mean it's perfect right out of the box. There's a couple of key things we can change to improve our experience using the trackpad. So within system preferences, you wanna press into trackpad, and the very first thing you wanna do is enable tap to click. This allows you to actually press and action things on your MacBook without having to hard press on the trackpad. I just find that a lot more intuitive in my opinion. Another thing you wanna change is the actual speed of the cursor within the trackpad. I find out of the box, it, it's a little bit slow for me. So I adjusted the speed just a little bit higher so it feels more responsive. This is entirely up to you. I definitely encourage you mess around with the scroll bar and see what trackpad speed works for your liking. Another thing you wanna change is the battery settings within your computer. If you go into dock and menu bar and then you press into the battery tab and then you enable show percentage, it just allows you to see how much percent battery life you actually have left. It's a lot more useful than just looking at a blank battery bar draining on your computer. So the last thing you should change within system preferences has to do with active and open windows in your computer. So by default in Mac OS, when you minimize a window, it goes onto your dock and shows as a preview. And there's a lot of advantages to that, but I find that when you're multitasking a lot, you can very quickly fill up your dock and it just starts to look cluttered. And I think there's a better way you can do this. So what I did within system preferences is go into dock and menu bar and then enable to minimize window into application icon. So now whenever I minimize windows, it's not gonna like fill up my entire dock. It's just gonna go and save within the actual app icon itself. And if I wanna get access to it, I just right click on the icon and press the window accordingly. Now I wanna talk about Control Center. It's one of the newest features within the Mac OS Big Sur operating system. And I believe there's a hidden feature in there that you might not have been aware of because I only discovered this a few weeks ago. So by default, when you press into the Control Center on the top right corner, it gives you quick access to a slew of features that you can enable and disable within the Mac operating system, but sometimes you might find yourself wanting to get access to these features faster and you actually can. So by holding down on, let's say the sound, you can drag that onto the menu bar and then now you have quick access to sound without having to go in within Control Center. You can do that with any of the icons within Control Center and it's very useful for getting access to things faster. So now within this menu bar, you can rearrange the icons by simply holding down Command and then pressing on the icon and then rearranging accordingly. If you wanna remove icons off the menu bar, simply press Command and drag the icon off the menu bar and then it will delete itself. You can only do do this with Apple-based menu bar items. You can't do this with third-party apps that are showing up on the menu bar. You have to do it a different way within system preferences. So now that we're done with Control Center, I wanna focus on the dock within the Mac operating system. It is fully customizable, and I think there's a few key changes you can make to make it more useful for you. For starters, it's really important that you clean up your dock. There's a lot of apps on there that you probably don't need access to immediately on a day-to-day -day basis, so you should be removing those. And you can do so by just right-clicking on the icon and then removing it from dock. I'm a huge believer that the less clutter you have on the computer, the better. It allows you to think better and kind of just be more productive as well. You can also hide the dock as well by pressing Command Option D. This can be very useful on these laptops because the screens are quite small. By being able to hide the dock, you get more screen space to do the work that you need to get done on these computers. You can always bring back the dock by just pressing again Command Option D or you can drag your mouse down to the bottom and it can just bring it back up for you on a moment's notice. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We're already on our road to 11,000 subscribers. We are so close, guys. So if you are new here, make sure to subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. More MacBook M1 videos are to come in the future and I know you'll enjoy them. Make sure to drop a like if you did enjoy the video and also comment hashtag MacBook M1 if you did finish. I'll make sure to heart and respond to your comment for doing so. But anyway, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in and I'll catch all of you guys in a future video. Peace.